In this screencast, we're going to talk about integrating web content into Android apps. In particular, we're going to look at how we can invoke the browser on an Android device via an implicit intent. Then we're going to look at integrating web views directly within the native application. So let's start out, um, first of all, by looking at the layout. And the layout we're going to do is the same one I just had in the, uh, the view graph there. So I'm going to have up here at the top just a button and down in the rest of the screen I'm going to fill it out with a web view. And of course I've created these guys, you know, just like you create any. So you can go over here under uh, composite and way down there at the bottom you can find the web view. And if we look at the uh, XML, bring this up. Um, I've got a linear layout. This text thing was the one that was in there originally. There's my button, and here's my web view. So it's just called web view, and I've given it an ID uh, web view one, and it's doing match parent here. So it's basically going to fill out the rest of that linear layout, which of course is um, filling its parent, which is my um, my entire display. So that's what the layout looks like and if we look in the Java source code I've got a couple of things going on here the first thing just to demonstrate that invoking the browser with an implicit view I just hung off my um, I hung off my button an event handler that just says fire off this implicit uh, intent which should fire up the browser on the device and uh, send it off to my uh, website. And then the other thing I do is I show how I can get that web view, which is on the bottom of the layout, to actually populate with a, a particular uh, piece of web content. So I go ahead and get myself a handle to that web view, the same way we've always done this, whether it's a button or a text view or anything else. And I cast it to a web view. So there's my uh, ID that I had in the layout we just looked at. Once I've got my web view object, I simply call load URL on it and give it the actual um, URL that I want it to load. So this is all happening in my onCreate. So when this application runs, what I'm expecting to happen is a button on top and then I, after a slight delay, I expect to see my web page actually pop up in the bottom part of the screen. So let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. Oh, wait, one more thing I want to show you before we do that. Since we're doing something now, we're actually going off to the internet. Okay? And depending on the market and where we're at, data might cost money. Okay? Here in the US, I think on Android, a lot of plans are still all you can eat plans. Um, the Verizon ones, are those now? Uh, quoted but you're okay is anybody on like a quota plan where you okay so if you're late if you've been there a long time you've had a smartphone you're probably grandfathered in with an all-you-can-eat plan but there's there's quota on a lot of plans moving forward and a lot of other markets it's the same way so what that means is you get a limited amount of bandwidth per month and if you go over you pay extra right so your user probably wants to know when you're using the network because you're probably consuming bandwidth which could be costing them money. So one of the things we have to do is we've got to tell the Android platform, hey, our application is going to use the internet. And what that does is when, first of all, it's not going to let us get to the internet if we don't do that. Okay? So if you don't ask your user for permission, your app's not going to work. Okay? It will install, but when it tries to go to the internet, it's going to say, Sorry, couldn't load that page because you get stopped. So if we put the explicit permission request inside the manifest, when the user installs the app, it gives a list of all the special things they need to give permission for on your app. It's going to say, this, uses, this app uses the internet, so the user knows up front when they're installing it, yeah, I understand, this is using the internet, could cost me money, okay, I'm installing it anyways. Okay. So what you have to do 
in order to get this to work is in your manifest you have to add um, a uses permission clause and what we need to do for the uh, web view is we need to tell it Android permission dot internet okay that basically says we're going to be accessing the internet in this application so once we do this and you're not going to see this on the em emulator course but if you actually were to um, install this on a uh, device from the market it's going to pop up and tell you you know these are the things this application does and in this case it's going to say it uses the internet so let's go ahead and run it then Okay, so there's my button, and after a few seconds, you'll see that my website loads down in the bottom pane. Now, on this site, I'm actually formatting for handheld devices, right? So I'm using, it's a WordPress instance, and there's a theme that I've applied that if it's an Android or an iOS device, it automatically renders, um, you know, for a, a small screen. So it actually looks good on a small screen. So if we go and click on one of these, it's going to pop the browser. Okay, but it, it stays formatted for small screens because that's what the user agent is telling it. Okay. And just for fun on the top, that one is where I actually pop the browser on that same URL that I'm loading before. So if we click this, now the implicit intent fires and Android resolves it to the, uh, the default browser on the device.